Okay, guys. So one thing that we have made sure so far is when we studied arrays, linked list, stacks, that you understand why we did what we did, right? Uh, all the things, all the restrictions that we put, all of them provide us some kind of a benefit. Okay. Uh, so the trade-offs that we do, okay, for any data structure is something that you need to understand because you are making it whenever you are uh, using a particular kind of data structure. Okay. So binary search tree okay uh, why do we need this or for that matter any other data structure when all of them are created out of arrays and linked list okay uh, the reason is very simple uh, it's basically that if you have certain kind of a structure as you have seen in stacks and queues right it's basically array you have not changed anything basically it's array or linked list which way you implement it on but since we put a restriction on how we can actually take in or out the data we learned that okay we can also save the order in which it came okay so that particular thing is uh, pretty nice or you can say it's helpful whenever we require okay whenever we have some kind of a uh, use of that information right so all the data structures that we will use we will try to see what kind of situation we should go for these data structures because until as you understand those you may be able to program but you won't be able to do it very well okay so keeping that in mind uh, i'll first try to explain to you what basically a uh, uh, what do you say a binary search tree is okay and uh, how is it different from whatever we have studied so far okay and for all comparison i'll just use arrays for now but uh you can see how even a linked list would behave in the same order so let's say i have some random numbers okay uh in a test of let's say 15 marks i have for how many students is there nine let's say 10 students i have there okay so 6 9 11 10 13 uh 5 19 14 uh, 8 and 2 Okay, let's say this is the order I have. I've saved it in there, right? If I have to save the same thing in a linked list, I would just have some pointers in between all of this, right? That's that's how we will have the linked list as well. If I try to save this thing in a binary search tree, how will we create that? Okay, so let's first learn how do we create a binary search tree. Let's say I start from the beginning, six. So six will be my first item. This will be my root node. Okay. Everything that happens after this will depend on the value of the root node. I came up with nine, which is greater than what uh, I have here. So I will put it in the right side. Okay. Anything greater than the root in hand, we will put it on the right side, right? 11, 11 is also heavier. So I will throw it this side, but there is already one node. So this 11 will now treat nine as the root. So is it greater than nine? Yes. So it will go here. Then I have 10. Okay, six, it's still greater through it in the right side. For nine, it's still greater through it in the right side. For 11, is it greater? No, 10 is smaller. So I will have in the left hand side. Okay, so just remember that left hand side is small, right hand side is greater. For 13, you will do the same process. You will get this. Uh, then you have five, which is smaller. You will get it here. Then you have 19, which will go here. Okay. And then you'll have 14, which will go here. No, it will go here. Okay, you can uh, do all the steps. Okay, it's the same way we created the first three and four. Uh, I'm pacing it up so that uh, we don't actually see all of these video, uh, all of the steps through and through. You can still practice on this. Okay, so this is how I created my binary search tree. Okay, for any binary search tree, we have a root. Okay. And for all root, okay, this guy is root at this level. If I just look at this much area, if I just look at this much area, okay, then this guy is the root. Okay, so whatever subtree, this entire thing is a tree. This is a subtree. Okay, so for subtree, this guy is a root. If I take a smaller subtree like this, this guy is the root. So your root keeps on changing based on what you are considering. Okay, so for now, we will consider the entire tree. Okay, so this is my root. Everything that is on the left side is my left subtree. Okay. Everything on the right and the same way are right subtrees. 
the two nodes which are at the same level okay so these two or all of them they are at the same level because they are at equal height from the key node this is at level 1 level 2 these are at, these two are at level 3 this is at level 4 this is at level 5 okay the levels are actually used when we try to measure the height of the tree okay so in this particular case the height of the tree is 5 okay now what we have to realize here is that for a particular parent both the uh, these uh, child let's say for this parent root is also called as parent uh, both these child are called as sister or brother nodes usually it's called sister nodes now i have saved it in this particular order but i still don't get why do i actually need to do it i mean i don't see any benefit of having things like this okay uh, what's what's the whole point okay so to understand that particular thing we need to do certain kind of operations okay the same operations we did for others okay we will see how much do each of these operation cost me okay let's say i have to insert another value i have to insert let's say 7 okay uh, i would pick here come is it greater yes this side is it uh, greater no this side is it greater uh, no so i will come here okay so i took three steps but it's it's a bit complicated it's not like an array that okay you will go at the last or you would come at the middle or somewhere like that you don't know how many steps a particular process will take so in the worst case scenario what could be the worst case scenario that i will keep going 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 i'll pick the longest chain and then i would locate whatever value i have okay this is the worst case scenario okay the longest chain which i have how do i measure the longest chain right since each node in the chain will increase the level by one so this is level zero this is level one two level three nodes level four level five and level six okay so the worst case complexity of inserting an element is the height of the tree okay for this tree it's five okay so maximum what i will have to do i'll have to take five or five plus one number of uh, steps but it's basically the height of the tree right similarly for deleting something let's say i delete this okay and this is going to be interesting if i delete something what would i actually have to do because i need to maintain that property that's that key property of a binary search tree that everything on the left should be smaller and everything on the right side should be greater okay so what happens if i delete this particular node let's check this thing uh if i delete this node how would it look like so uh six five two and then nine is not there okay so let's say i bring eight here so if eight is here uh eight will put the 11 this side which is greater all the other items will still remain the same so it will be like eight and then 11 and so on right let's say uh i delete uh, another element let's say 13 okay i deleted 13 so if i delete 13 the 19 will take its place right so i need to maintain this entire structure so if i delete something let's say this particular item and i have both of these uh items going on everything this side is high higher and everything on this side is lower than this value i still need to maintain that so what i will do is that this value if i bring it here okay assuming somehow i'll fill it this particular point if i bring it here if this value is let's say x and this is y and this is z I know that y is less than x and z is greater than x. So with these two, can I conclude that y is less than z? So if I bring this third value here, this side of the tree is still balanced, right? Because everything is smaller and I haven't changed anything after y. So they will remain the same way. Now on this particular side of the tree, it's basically the same problem. I have deleted your, if I move this guy here, it's basically like I have deleted in this particular part of the tree. It's like I have deleted your nine. So what would you do? You would either bring it here or if there are a lot of childs associated with it, I will just try it with this one. Okay. So if I try it with this particular guy, I need to make sure that this value, this eight is actually greater than the value, which is here, which I have moved from nine, right? So if I move this nine here, let's say I deleted six, I move this nine here. 
and then I move this eight here. So what will happen? This will be nine, and this will be eight. So is eight greater than nine? No. Then why should it be on the right side? So you always move this particular guy here. So I will move eleven here. Okay. So if I move eleven here, eight still remains in the same position. Is it fine? Yes, it is fine. So I will have to move this guy here as well. Thirteen, and then ten, and then I have to move this guy here. Then nineteen, and then this guy would just be at this particular point, right? So all you have to do is move this particular guy. So worst case scenario, if I delete the root node, I would have to trace every single item till the leaf. Okay. Again, how long? Theta h, right? Similarly, for searching a particular item, I would check it here. You are not here. I will come here, check it here. If it is greater than, uh, if if you are greater than the value, I will check in this direction. If you are less than, I will check in this direction. Let's say you are still greater than it. Then here, you are still greater. Here, still greater. Here, now you are smaller. This side. Okay. So the worst case scenario. This is basically the binary search tree has binary search in its name, right? So binary search as simple as that. If the value is greater, go on the right side. If smaller, go on the left side. Maximum you will have to check till from root to the longest uh, leaf, right? So again, this process will be theta h. If you can see this, uh, and if I compare it with stack and uh, sorry, not stack array and uh, linked list. Arrays insertion um, for a sorted array. Let's say because I have some kind of an order balanced here. So let's take sorted. For sorted array insertion was theta n. Deletion was again theta n. Search was theta log n. Right. In case of a linked list insertion, even in the sorted region, it was constant. Deletion constant. Search was linear. So if you can see, this particular process has a constant. Uh, complexity throughout these operations. So that's one of the uh, key features of uh, binary search tree. That regardless of which operation you are doing, insertion, deletion, search, you will have almost the same complexity, worst case complexity for all these three processes. Unlike arrays and linked list, right? So this is the first reason why you would actually construct this kind of a structure instead of a linked list or an array. If you construct it in such a way. Again, it will be a little more harder for you to grasp it, but for the computer, it actually saves time, right? So now I think it should make sense. Why would I actually create a, such a complex data structure when I can just put things in a line? Okay, because the line has higher complexity when you actually use the data. Okay, and for using the data, this particular structure does pretty good. Okay. Now there are a few more questions that you are, will have to find the answer to, as the book refers to. Uh, there are some more questions that we need to answer about BSTs and why do we have these orders? Uh, does it actually provide us anything more than uh, simplistic uh, complexities? Is there anything more than that? All those discussion will happen in the next video.